And we're back! Bet you didn't think you'd see us again. Right, Mr. Bones? I was hoping you'd only see my hinder parts floating into the sky. Yeah, me too. Uh, but now what? Now what? Mr. Bones, you got anything? Uh, I am looking to you. What do you got, Sherlock? Well, this is the beauty of channels like this. Because it could get quite depressing if we thought, this passed by and we gotta wait till next year. Or we have to wait six months, seven months, whatever. You know, if, if we don't have something to look for in our near future, we might start looking at the world and the world is very grim. So this is the blessed hope that we keep encouraging each other with. I believe I was called specifically to teach about our Lord's appointed times, his special Moedim, his appointments with mankind, and to show how each of them relates to a rapture and how every one of them can be a very real rapture scenario. And as we've gone along for the past two years, we've learned so much that uh, the top rapture scenario has changed places several times. And uh, I tell you, um, I I'm still not nailed down on the absolute positively best one. Although my favorite, uh, we, we just recently got to when we were teaching about Noah and the dove and the raven. Uh, because that is so specific to the Holy Spirit being released and then being brought back into the ark for seven and then the raven being down to and fro for seven. I mean, that, that just is so perfect. So that, that's really up there. But Resurrection Day is a day, remember what the Lord said in Ecclesiastes, that which has been done before will be done again, and the Lord requireth that which has been done. So he says, I will declare the end from the beginning, and I will put my prophecy in here, and then when I do my final act, you will see it's already been in here. So you got Resurrection Day was when the graves were open and he took many out. So that again can be replayed again. All of these prophecies can be replayed again. The reason Feast of Trumpets was everybody's favorite is because of the last trump. That's, that's really the main reason. It's a completion of a cycle. Makes great sense. And then all the names associated with it. But we can always see the names associated like the coronation of the king and the bride and the opening of the door. We could see that being associated with the end times also after the tribulation. We know the Lord will come back during these fall feasts also and, and fulfill these right in a row. So we were uh, looking at it as a possible dual fulfillment there also. But we know summer is nigh. We know about the many summer and spring references with rapture and being taken away associated with that time of year and with the Shavuot and Pentecost feast, the feast of wheat and wine and oil, three separate feasts separated by 50 days during the harvest season. And then we just passed tabernacles proper. I say that, I'll explain in a minute, uh, with Shemini Yatzeret yesterday completing Possibly, we could say even today, the 19th. Um, and then we're starting into Simchat Torah, which means return or rejoice in the Torah. Return back to the book, which we should always be doing. But if you remember, there was a unique story, and it's in a unique chapter. First Kings, okay, remember, we're going to be made kings and priests. So 1 Kings has a lot of, you know, and that's when Elijah shows up in 1 Kings 17, 117. And he is, of course, raptured. And he, of course, knows when he's going to be raptured. And his assistant or protege, Elisha, knows he's going to get raptured. And 50 sons of the prophets of Bethel know. And 50 sons of the prophets of Jericho know. So 102 people know this guy's getting raptured that day. And of course, that's, it, this is also during the spring or summer time. But let's go to 1 Kings chapter 8. So you got 1 Kings, that, that's associated with us. 
Chapter 8 is a new beginning associated with us, and this chapter is 66 verses. The only one in, in Kings that has 66 verses echoing the 66 books of the Bible. And if we go down to chapter, or verse 65, And at that time, Solomon, which again means shalom man or man of peace, Solomon held a feast and all of Israel with him, a great congregation from the entering in of Hamath. Hamath is spelled He Mem Tav. Okay? He is the spirit man, Mem is the waters, and Tav is the cross. So we have the spirit and the waters. And remember, we are, we are also considered waters. The book of Revelation says the people, the waters are the people. And with the story of Noah, the waters were separated and the people were separated. So we got the spirit and the waters and the cross. So the spirit is going to be taken up. The waters are going to be separated and it's because of the cross. So that, that city has a little more meaning than just its name. And, and the uh, Hebrew meaning is anger and heat and also a wall. So ties in with tribulation. So Solomon holds this feast. This is right after he completed the temple. Um, incidentally, he completed the temple earlier in this chapter. It explains that it took seven years and six months, and he finished the temple in the eighth month. Okay, the eighth month is the month that the flood happened. And for all you that are new to that, in the story of Genesis, the, the months were flipped by six. So it says in the second month, but after justification of the calendar, it is the eighth month. According to the, the Orthodox look at Rosh Hashanah, it still is the second month, but it's, but it's the eighth month as concerned to the rest of the Bible. So Solomon finishes the temple in the eighth month. Interesting, okay? And then he holds this feast. Now this is the following year. So he finishes the temple the following year. They're holding the Feast of Tabernacles, but he holds it for two weeks, 14 days. So, at, the, at that time, Solomon held the feast, all Israel with him, a great congregation from the entering in of Hamath unto the river Egypt before the Lord our God, seven days and seven days, even 14 days. And on the eighth day, he sent the people away, and they blessed the king and went unto their tents joyful and glad of heart for all the goodness that the Lord had done for David, his servant, and for Israel, his people. So, number one is, are we out of the woods? Are we closing the book on Tishri and Tabernacles? If you were going to have one time, if the Lord was going to have one time that his Feast of Tabernacles would last 14 days or double the amount of time, and you thought of the last, very last feast before the Great Tribulation of seven years, that would make sense, okay? So, today is the 19th of October. Again, ending Shemini Atzeret and starting Simchat Torah. If we say it was a seven and a seven, that means yesterday was the start of the next seven. And that pushes the new eighth day to, listen to this, the 26th of October, 26th, possibly 27th. So for those that are looking at the month off calendar, they would be saying that's uh, the Feast of Trumpets, the new, the new Feast of Trumpets by that view. I would be saying that's an important day to look at if the Feast of Sukkot was doubled by the Man of Peace, the true Man of Peace, um, then that, that will put us at that same time frame, okay? So that's, that's the number one thing to look at, that, that we're, we're all going to be wide awake for the disappearance of the moon. And again, um, uh, when the moon goes away uh, behind the sun, that is a representation, each and every moon cycle, each and every moon of the rapture, the moon disappears. The sun is like the bridegroom who comes out, grabs the moon, and takes her away. So that, that's right at the end of this month, okay? October 26, 27, okay, for all the 
date hoppers, right? But um, besides that, and I am still of the mind we are on the exact correct months. I'm sorry for all those that are looking for that. I don't want to discourage anybody. Um, I just want you to know that's, that's my view. As soon as I became aware that someone was looking at this, Ricardo Garcia was the first I heard from. Uh, I investigated it myself, and from my work and my conclusions, I am solid that September, October is the true time of your seventh month for the Lord, and March and April is the true time for Nissan. And uh, I might show that later, but just know this, and I've mentioned this many times, Aries is only a couple weeks long. In fact, if you, if you go to Stellarium, put the sun at the very, very, very first part of Aries and click day by day and just follow the sun, 18 days maximum, 18 days maximum that the sun can be in Aries. Pisces, right beforehand, the sun is in for 44 days from the beginning of Pisces to the end. That's a month and a half. So you see, the Lord knows that the sun and moon are always going to be running out of sync with each other, but in perfect sync. He uses the two constellations of Pisces and also Virgo. Virgo is 52 days long. So you understand there can't be one month where the sun's in Virgo, because 52 days is, that's almost two months. And then following Virgo is Libra. Again, Libra is very short. I, be, I believe Libra is 18 days as well. It might be 16. But again, the two of them make two months, Virgo and, and Libra, and then Pisces and Aries. So. If we go back to what we originally heard about this, it is not the sun that should be in Aries at Nissan 1, but the new sliver of the new moon should be in Aries. And uh, Ty Green did an excellent video of this uh, uh, a while back when he was pointing out when is the true ninth of Av. And so uh, I'll, I'll post that here. And these were the months that came from the Hebrew um, documents that have where the new moon should be spotted in which constellation. Okay, so enough on that. So first of all, we are looking at the end of this month when the moon disappears, maybe we'll disappear also and go into our temporary dwelling, our tabernacle and tabernacle with the Lord. If not, we are entering into the month that is the anniversary of the flood. Now, if the world knew that the Bible said, Jesus said in his own words, that the end of the world will come and it'll be like the days of Noah. And if they knew the days of Noah, they were intermixing DNA and corrupting the seed of man with the seed of animals and with the seed of Nephilim, and that there was great sexual immorality and debauchery, and there was great rebellion against God, and that there were people on the earth warning of the end. And then if they knew that the anniversary of that great flood, the first great end of the world, is coming up this month, I think they'd be scared. I think they should be scared. And that is why I titled this, Hey World, be afraid. Be very afraid. Because you're pushing God's buttons, you've been doing that, and He has an appointed time that He is going to end this. So. God has his appointed feasts of celebration, but he also has other appointed times. And what we found out was the appointed time of the ninth of Av, when bad things would happen, is butt up against the true feast of Pentecost, the Feast of Wine, which is on the eighth of Av, by counting seven complete Sabbaths. I know the words in the 
uh, Hebrew documents uh, are a little confusing. They kind of offer both, both, and uh, most people discount 49 days. But um, as we use God's style and has, as we have arrived to our other conclusions, if we count complete Sabbaths, then these things work out perfect. And from that Pentecost, seven complete Sabbaths brings us to the day before Feast of Trumpets for the Feast of Oil. So here we are. We're coming up on the anniversary of the flood. And I just want to go, first of all, let's look at Matthew 24 where Jesus says it. All right, Matthew 24. So right off the bat, in the, in the beginning of the chapter, Matthew 24, Jesus went out and departed from the temple. Remember, we are the temple of God. And his disciples came to him to shew him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See you not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So first of all, he, he, the first thing he does, he says, this temple is going to be taken away. Okay? Now, he's telling this before Passover, and he knows that this will happen 40 years later. Our, our understanding is he started his ministry in 27, and it went three and a half years. And so his crucifixion would have been the first two weeks of the year 31 AD, meaning that the temple was destroyed 40 years later. For Jesus to say this is going to happen and 40 years later for it to happen is perfect. Okay, you might argue a little bit on a date here or there, a year here or there, but that would be perfect. For him to say the temple is going to be taken away. And he knew it would be taken away on the 9th of Av. So the first temple was taken away on the 9th of Av. Second temple was taken away on the 9th of Av. Third temple, will we be taken away on the 9th of Av? Okay, something to think about. But look at, again, the perfection. This is what my whole passion is about, showing you the Lord's perfection in everything he does. So he said the temple will be taken away. Now, at the end, so they're about to ask, what's the end going to be like? He says the first thing, temple is going to be gone. So even if we don't get raptured at the same time the temple got taken away, he says here, the typology here is the first thing that will happen is a rapture. The temple will be gone. Okay? And all the gold will be gone. The gold in between every one of the stones is gone. Stones left knocked down, right? Stone representing the law, the gold representing the covering of Jesus Christ. So the first thing, rapture is going to happen. And they say, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? When will these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and what shall be the end of the world? Then he answered, there's going to be much deception and many claiming to be Christ. I, I always struggled with that. I'm like, I just don't believe there's ever going to be a time where a bunch of people are going to pop up and say, I'm Jesus, I'm Jesus, I'm Jesus. And they don't. Okay? They say, I am Messiah. Messiah means anointed. Okay? So, there will be many popping up saying, I'm anointed. I have the message from God to speak to you. And many of this will be false deception. Okay? The biggest signs of this would be uh, with the um, Muhammad starting the Muslim nation with a false prophecy that he claimed to got from God. Uh, the Fatima, which is... Uh, the, the miracle that the supposed Catholic Church saw and heard a message from Mary. And um, Joseph Smith, you know, claiming to get a, a message from an angel and from God and start a whole new religion. Those are the biggies, okay? We're not, we're not talking about somebody that just had a difference of opinion of doctrine, okay? Or, or someone that's saying, I think the rapture is going to happen. No, no, no. This is not somebody anointed saying, I heard the word of the Lord and this is the word he said. Uh, I like how uh, our brother Bob uh, Barber put it. He said, uh, uh, prophets don't come with charts and pictures, right? They just come and they say, the Lord said this, that's it. This is going to happen. And then they just wait for it to happen. They don't come and try to show you, hey, I, th I think this is what the Bible means. Okay, so we are, we are doing a type of prophecy, which is teaching, but we are not claiming to be prophets of God. So we can't be false prophets of God. 
But again, there's just, there's so much to look at. And again, I must say, this is why I love channels like this. And this is why I want to be a channel like this, because we give hope. We keep people's spirits up. We keep the spirit of the church up and elevated instead of being depressed down because Satan is powering up his spirit and he does it by the stuff is not even overtly evil. It is irritating. It's infuriating. It's stupid. It's the kind of thing that just makes you so mad that feeds into his spirit. So we have to turn our eyes towards his word, fill our cup every day and let him keep our heart delighted and have something heavenly to keep our minds on as we continue to share his love in this world. And that keeps the spirit of God strong in presence in this world. Because the whole thing with, if you ever wonder, why are these stupid rules? That's, un that's intentional. It's to infuriate you. But here we have, just right now, we've had something to look at no more than a couple of weeks without a very important appointed time with God to look at. Let's go to Genesis 1.14 one more time, just because many have missed this. 1.14, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. So when he says signs, it's the word oath, which is like a signal, like a signal fire or like trying to wave somebody down and, and draw attention. So God put the sun and the moon and the stars to be for signs. So when we see a sign like the Revelation 12 sign, and again, I encourage you, if you've never looked at this, look up the conception comet that happened before the Revelation 12 sign. It makes the sign even more spectacular. But a comet came from the loins of Leo and passed into the womb of Virgo at Hanukkah, which is when the Holy Spirit of God brought the seed into Mary on Hanukkah and then and ushered in Jupiter into the womb of Virgo and then it went for nine and a half months and then that sign happened on the Feast of Trumpets, the completion of the sign where, where Jupiter exited, which would be her womb. And then the sun, the moon, sun clothed her, moon was at her feet. So here's another note. If you're going with, we're a month off, that means that the Revelation 12 sign didn't happen at Feast of Trumpets. That's kind of huge, don't you think? You know, we're working so hard to make this blood moon fit with Passover and Sukkot, these blood moons, but that means the last 32 blood moons over the last 2,000 years didn't happen on Passover and Sukkot. So that, that's why I'm just, I'm not a fan of it. I love the thought that the entire world could be wrong about what we've always believed because we've seen that many times. We, we saw that with Shavuot being on the 15th day of the third month. The whole world thought different. We saw that with true Pentecost being the Feast of Wine. The whole world thought different, and most of them still do. We saw that with the Feast of Oil being tied to the Feast of Trumpets and the Horn of Oil. So I get that. I, I love that part of it. But that means we, we just have to say they were never right, ever. And it does. I, I, I like what um, Jason Blood Church. <laughs> His name is Jason Blood, <laughs> but uh, he, he gets the name Blood Church. It's like Dr. Barry Rapture. That's my last name is Rapture Channel. Um, but anyways, Jason Blood, when, when he explained uh, the true seasons, I always thought, you know, in April, uh, the barley is green. So the first offering I just thought was green barley and somehow they use that. So I, I can understand that. But I mean, that means all of them are always wrong. Um, and... That's just something to think about. But signals, seasons is Moedim, which is he put the sun, moon, and stars to tell you when his appointments with mankind are. So when he has things happen on a full moon or at a new sliver of a moon or at the first half moon or the last half moon, all those fit with 
how he designed it. The last is for days and years, and that's not for Saturday, Sunday, or the year 2021-22. Those words specifically mean for his days, like Passover, Resurrection Day, First Fruits, Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, those days, but also for Shemitahs and Jubilees. So he said, I created the sun, moon, and stars so you would know when I'm signaling you that something big's going to happen. Also, when you know when my appointments with mankind are. And also, so you know when my Shemitahs start and end and when my Jubilees are. So, the Shemitah just did turn over. And we are in a new Shemitah cycle, a new seven-year sabbatical cycle. That's a fact. Israel is in agreement. In fact, in Israel, they were saying it's also the Jubilee. That's significant. They may be wrong. I, like I said before, I believe God is keeping track of multiple Jubilee counts, things that are separated by 50 years. Because I believe the true end at the year 5999 and 6000 will also be a type of jubilee but not counting from ground zero of of adam but when you understand this again then we, we know we passed a major landmark and we have a blood moon we have a comet we have a, a conception comet or the sign uh, like the star of david over um, bethlehem or the great revelation 12 sign then we know God is pointing us in his direction that he intended. Now we go to the story of Noah. He says it'll be like the days of Noah. Let's read that real quick. Matthew 24. Okay. Matthew 24 and let's start at 32. Now learn the parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So, We've all been very in love with a summertime rapture. And we know that we are really milking out the very end of summer before summer's not only nigh, summer is bye-bye. So this is what's very hard to look at the winter time is is all these associations. But again, there's going to be a mid-tribulation snatching away of the tribulation saints and the two witnesses and we also know there's a gathering at the very end both of those could complete the summertime but as we continue verily i say unto you this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away heaven and earth shall pass away but of that day and hour knoweth no man No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, before the flood, before there was any trouble, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered into the ark, and they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So first of all, perfectly normal until, and even knowing his family got in the ark, that didn't even phase him. What phased him? Drip, drip. What's that? Somebody spitting on me? No. It's raining. Then all of a sudden, whoosh, and the fountains of the great deep were broken open. Okay? So, they didn't know anything until it happened. Now think about it like this. The fountains of the great deep breaking open. Does that sound like anything else that's going to happen, Mr. Bones? The dead in Christ rise first and break open the world? Yes. And then... Heaven opened and the flood coming down, hailstones and coals of fire. Heaven door is open. The great flood waters burst up from beneath. 
So those fit with a rapture. That's what's going to happen. The earth is going to crack open everywhere. The entire earth is going to quake at once and it's going to crack open and they'll see the foundations of the earth as it breaks open and the dead in Christ rise and then we're caught up. So the waters are separated just like in the days of Noah. But since we're here, let's finish this. So they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, one shall be taken and the other left. I know there's been debate about this, but the Greek word defines it. The one taken is taken, paralambano, taken as a friend or companion. Okay, they're taken as a friend or companion. They're not taken away to hell, like in that movie Ghost, when the little black things came and took the guy underground to hell. No, this is taken as a friend or companion. This is Jesus taking us. The one left is the word aphiemi, which means divorced or put away. So that is somebody that knew the Lord, but never had a salvation moment, were not born again, they just knew his name, and they are put away. Then shall two be in the field, one should be taken, the other left. Two women should be grinding at the mill, one taken as a friend or companion, the other one left and put away, divorced. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour the Lord cometh. See, he didn't say the day this time. But know this, if the good man of the house had known what watch, what watch, If the good man of the house would have known what watch the thief would have come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. We're watching, we're talking, especially to our family and our house, and we're doing everything we can that our family knows the truth. So our house won't be broken up. There's many that never get around to that conversation because, ah, uh, well, maybe, maybe later on my deathbed I'll get to that. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, oh, a second week of tabernacles? I didn't think of that. The Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom the Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, Jesus Christ, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Don't you want to be caught doing this? right? Don't you want to be caught in if you, those that don't have a channel, but you're in the comment section and you're encouraging, you're, you're doing this with us, all right? And he'll catch you right in this lovely comment. I'm so thankful for you and your channel. And I also love Mr. Bones. <gasps> Mr. Bones? Oh, I, that, that's so nice. That really lifts my heart. <laughs> so let him catch you doing that. But you're going to get a lot of fans this, this time. Oh, I'm, I'm so excited to look at the comment section. <laughs> okay. Verily I say unto you, Check this out. Is this an awesome promise? Blessed is that servant whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. What? You mean just by me loving and looking for and watching for your appearing and encouraging brethren, you're going to make me ruler over all your goods? What? What kind of prerequisite is that? That's so easy. That's like he cares about hearts more than works, more than the strength of the hand or the intelligence of the mind. He cares about the heart and the love. And that's who he's going to put in charge of ruling his new world with him. I, I think that's, that's really worth looking into if I were you. But and if that evil servant, <laughs> here, you do that. Oh, wait, hey, here, I'll do it. Let's see, can you get your hand up there? Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> oh, here we go, here we go. <laughs> oh, yeah, you do evil so good. Thank you very much. All right. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord's not coming now. Not coming until 2023, 2024, 2027. He's not coming this generation. He's not coming. I've heard it all. Okay. Do you know you're fulfilling the Bible verse? I wouldn't want to be the guy fulfilling this verse. Oh, the Lord delayeth his coming. He's not coming. 
and he begins to smite his fellow servants. That's being rude and, and, and sometimes very mean in the comment section. And to eat and drink with the drunken. Again, drunken is not just that you had some drinks of alcohol. Drunk is drunk on the world. The people that are so asleep, that's drunken. Drunk with this world, drunk with all that the world has to offer and ignoring the very bread of life, the water of life, his wine, his word. Begin to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come. Now listen, he's a servant. Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour he's not aware, and shall cut him asunder. That's like, again, severing the relationship. And appoint his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So what's a hypocrite? Somebody that says they're something that they are not or pretends to be something. So this is somebody that may be a churchgoer. He may even be watching some of the channels and is never slow to put a nasty, snarky comment. And he says, the Lord's not coming now and we're not getting pre-tribulation raptured out of here and you better be prepared and you're not gonna be ready and you're gonna fall away and yada, yada, all the stuff, okay? Smiting fellow servants. The Lord of that servant I would, I would read this carefully if you're in this group. He's going to cut you asunder and appoint you your portion with the other hypocrites claiming to be saved, claiming to be Christians because they know his name, but he doesn't know them because there's no relationship. They were never born again of the Spirit. When you are born again of the Spirit, the Spirit is not silent in you, but the Spirit moves in you and actually causes change. That's the fruit. So, it'll be like the days of Noah. People will be eating and drinking and going about life even though there's warnings all around. There's somebody building a giant ark for 120 years. And then he's giving them a time. It's gonna come, it's gonna happen. The anniversary of the flood will fall on the 11th and 12th, possibly 11, 12, 13. It depends on our first sighting of the first sliver. From my view on Stellarium, it looks like the 12th of November, but 11, 12, 13 is close enough. Anniversary of when the flood started. Now, if you were with us for a while last year when we were talking about this, in the book of Jubilees, it says that the original sin where Eve was deceived by the serpent, she took that choice on the 17th day of the second month, which is the anniversary of the flood. We don't know if that's true. Book of Jubilees is respected, but we don't know if that's true because it's not in the real Bible, the canonical Bible. Um, but something interesting could be, and for the Lord to bring punishment exactly on that day of the transgression, that's very much his style. But to look at it now, is, is God going to destroy the earth, he said, once with water and once with fire? Is he going to do it on the same anniversary? Hailstones and coals of fire raining for 40 days and 40 nights, bringing us right about to the time of Hanukkah. Very real possibility. And I also saw my good friend, Pastor Sandy. He said that at this time, grace, because Noah's name is rest, chen, but uh, backwards is grace. So grace went into the ark and was lifted up from the earth on the 17th day of the second month. Very interesting. That's also 40 and seven days from Rosh Hashanah. And, and remember, we saw these connections with Moses's trips up the mountain and then it would be described as 40 and seven days in between each of these times. So all those connections are very interesting, but, but grace being lifted up from off the earth. And we know at the rapture, the age dispensation of grace ends and grace will be lifted up. And now we are in a new, they are in a new dispensation of the tribulation where salvation will come at the cost of your life and maintaining your testimony under the threat of death and, and actually to death. 
So that's very interesting. So we have the rest of this week till the moon disappears to look at. And then immediately, we only got 11 days until the flood scenario. So again, that's why I love doing what we do. We are keeping happy, smiley, looking, eyes looking up all throughout the year. And it's biblical. We're not just coming off of, I just had a thought or I had a dream. This is, this is when, you know, when, when, when push comes to shove and this, this whole Shemitah thing was so very exciting. I saw every channel light up and everybody more frequently coming on and a true joy and happiness at the look at, yes, we know this is a Shemitah year, 5782, and we know it absolutely does end and start a new one at the Feast of Trumpets. So it's true biblical excitement. And we know if it's a jubilee, it goes to the 10th. And we also know that there's a law that says that the, on Day of Atonement, the judgment is sealed, but it's not passed until after the Hoshana Rabbah, which is the last great plea for the great salvation, which is the seventh day of tabernacles. But if we are looking at a double, then it would be like the 25th of October. And then the new eighth day, Shemini Atzeret. And remember, I keep saying this, but I'm going to show it here. Shemini Atzeret means the eighth tearing or the great eighth assembling. So eight, new beginning and assembling. And though it tarry, wait for it, because it'll, it'll come and it won't tarry on Shemini Atzeret, um, that the gematria is 1170. Okay, Shemini Atzeret, the eighth assembly. Uh, oh, mini bones, could you help me out? What's up? Okay, Shemini at Saret, the eighth assembly. Okay, it's spelled Shin, Mem, Yud, Nun, Yud, Ayin, Sadi, Resh, Tav. Ayin, Sadi, that's the ancient Sadi. Looks like a fishing hook. Resh Tav. Okay. So the Shem, the Gematria of Shemini is 410, which means separation, mighty heroes. And then each individual letter, victory of faithful soul, 40, testing, 10, complete, 50, jubilee, 10, complete. Then Ayin Sadi Resh Tav. 70, generation, perfect completeness. 90, saints lifted, sorrows, suffering, division. 200, distress, redemption, division. 400, which is 8 times 50, divine perfection of time. So the, the total of Atzeret is 760. Okay, so put these in a sentence. Complete victory of the faithful soul over testing to be restored at the end. Atzeret, sifting saints, division at the perfect completion of this generation, divinely orchestrated period of time. Wow. Another way to look at this, Shimini. Okay, so that's the teeth and the waters and the hand of God, new life, hand of God. Division, cutting, waters are people. The work, seed, air, fish, the work, to work to worship the cutting division action to deliver the seed many fish air by his hand to deliver the many fish i love that channel okay at Surette. so it's uh i in and then uh the sadi is a fish hook uh resh tav watch see behold the way, fish hook, righteous, caught up. The head, prince, knowledge, his complete work. Put it in a sentence. Behold, watch, and see the righteous caught up by the prince by their acknowledgement of his completed work. Amen. So, 716 and 410 is 1170. Separate in the waters. They are not attached as a friend. That's the same as Paralambano. 
Then two will be in the field. One will be taken as a friend. Attached as a friend is 1170. Okay? So again, we have a second shot at this Shemini Yatzeret because of 1 Kings 8, 65 and 66. Thank you, Mini Bones. It may pleasure. And now, uh, back to our show. A 117 is when the curse was reversed, when they crossed through the Red Sea, when Jesus resurrected from the grave and, and reversed the curse. No, uh, Jonah spit out of the whale. Uh, um, Joseph being pulled out of the pit. Those are both in typology, not in actual day. Um, but all the other 117, from the very first 117 in uh, Genesis 1-6, and it says, And the Lord said, Let it divide. And then we know Psalm 117 divides the Bible, divides the Word. So for a 1170, that means it's the ultimate separation. And to be associated with the waters being separated. All that is just so perfect. But if we are saying, okay, all that passed, now, why do I think rapture is so near? Knowing that something's happening in Israel is super neat, but it's, it doesn't give us confidence in our time, right? Because that could go on for another year or two. Uh, knowing about the great earthquakes and tsunamis, it's been going on. It could go on for another seven, eight, 10 years if we're just going by earthly signs. World War III, has this been the slowest world war to ever start? It's like, come on, do something, please, just bomb somebody, I don't know. But it, it, it doesn't give us great confidence because it could cool down or it could ramp up. They're showing aliens. They got this guy called the Mahdi, or wait, I'm sorry, uh, that's, that's the Muslim version of their um, savior who will uh, eventually fight against and in their version of the story, defeat Jesus, which is not going to happen. Uh, but that's the Mahdi, which they expect right now. But there's a, uh, there's a man that, that is in, gaining great popularity in Israel right now. And it's known as this, this prodigy, this young man who knows the scripture inside and out and can amaze even the rabbis. It comes about once in a generation. And, and, and guess how they define a generation? 70 to 80 years. So it's been about 70 plus years since one of these fellows has risen up in the ranks and now he's getting great attention. So some are saying this, this guy would be a good uh, candidate for the Antichrist. But again, does that say rapture is going to happen now? Rapture is going to happen this season? Rapture is going to happen before the end of the year or before the end of the next year? No, okay? When we get pushed to shove, we need to know these kind of numbers, okay? From biblical account of Nebuchadnezzar and from their captivity to our time. World War I, Hitler being appointed, Nuremberg trials. From the story of Daniel where it says there's going to be a great abomination that makes desolate set up 1260 or 1290. And then there's the Dome of the Rock that falls exactly in those years and then from there blessed is he who comes 1335 and it brings us to 21 and 22 or the hebrew year 5781 5782 then we look at israel israel is 74 years old and we know they won't pass 80 so that that has crunched our time from 457 bc we know the first time that seven Shemitahs and 62 Shemitahs, or periods of seven years, 483 years, brought us to 27 AD, which was Jesus starting his ministry. Three and a half years into it, 42 months was his ministry. Then he's on the cross in 31 AD. 40 years from that, temple is destroyed on 9th of Av. So we got, remember, he was baptized when the dove was released just like the story of Noah in, uh, in the month of Av and that's also when Moses broke the tablets and 3,000 died 
And that's also when Samson pushed out the pillars. And then, can you see, can they see that, Daniel? That's when Jesus was baptized, he came out of the water, same time as the dove being released. And then the Holy Spirit came on the 120 in the upper room and 3,000 were saved. 3,000, 3,000, 3,000. So we know that Jesus was baptized in Av, goes into the wilderness to fast from Elul 1 until Day of Atonement, just like Moses did between these two mountain trips, and just like all of Israel now fasts, the Orthodox do, from Elul 1 until Day of Atonement. Jesus comes out on Day of Atonement, goes into the temple and reads, I declare this great year of liberty, closes the book before he says the day of vengeance. Then he does three and a half years of ministry. So there's three years and then a half brings you to on the 10th day of Nisan. From the 10th day, a half, half year, 10th day of Nisan, he goes in four days early, because the lamb must go in four days early into the temple. He rides in on a donkey, and they're saying, Hosanna in the highest. And then he's on the cross on the 14th, the same time they're sacrificing a lamb. And they sacrifice a lamb early, and they sacrifice one at the end, both of the times he was on the cross. He was on the cross for six hours, representing the 6,000 years of human history that he paid for. Meanwhile, they're singing the Hallel and singing about the great king that will come and pay for them. They're singing Psalm 118, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And it's him on the cross. Then he gives up his ghost and he goes into the grave exactly to fulfill, we moving you Mr. Bones, thank you, <laughs> to fulfill unleavened bread as he was supposed to, to, to replay the death angel passing over the houses that had the blood on the door. And then he brought them through the Red Sea for first fruits when Jesus comes out. Then he walks with them all the way until the 15th day of the third month, which is seven complete Sabbaths, because that's what Jesus would do. And then he presents himself as the first fruit of the wheat on Shabbat and fulfills it. Then he pours out his spirit like wine at the Feast of Wine and they actually have a witness stand up and say, those men are drunk because it was pouring out an intoxicating beverage upon the temple and started the ministry. And then the Feast of Oil is the gifts of the Spirit that came and then they started their ministry. So everything about God is perfect, always has been perfect. He has an appointed time that he appointed before the beginning of the world. Is it the appointment of the flood the second time with fire? It could be. Would we go seven days early as Noah's family went into the ark seven days early and then they were safe in the ark for seven? So that's November 5th, November 4th and 5th. So we got October 25, 26, 27 worth looking at as a serious rapture contender. Then we got November 4th and 5th. Serious rapture contender, get on the ark. Then the 11th and 12th, serious rapture contender. The anniversary of the flood. And then we are going to go to Hanukkah. And Hanukkah, Hanuk, that's Enoch's name. And Enoch was the first man raptured. That makes Hanukkah all by itself, just by Enoch connection, a very great rapture scenario. We have to bend our mind around all these summer rapture scenarios, summer and springtime rapture scenarios are not applying to us. But, um, you know, that's, that's what we do when we're pushed to the edge. We want to look at what is right here available in front of us, but we can't be tied down that we close our eyes and say, oh, he's not coming for a while. I refuse to let my heart go there. And I don't think you should either because he said a faithful and wise servant wouldn't do that. So we're still in due season and we're going to keep looking and we're going to keep our hearts up and our eyes up because now when we know all this, then we say, okay, now what's the world happening? 
they, they actually have the mark that'll be tied to biometrics. I heard this, that guy Noah, uh, who's the uh, uh, assistant to uh, Dr. Evil. <laughs> you will own nothing and love it. Um, he said that they will be able to know when, once you have this in you. If you walk into a room where the great high chancellor's picture is, they'll be able to know if your heart likes him or not. And if you don't, and you can't fake it because they're reading you inside, just like you can't fake it with God. You could say, you know, Jesus said, they come near to me with their lips. They say all these flattering words, but their heart is far from me. Satan is doing the exact same thing. He will know whether you're loyal to him. And if you're not, some kind gentleman will come and escort you to a re-education camp. And you will be in there and either get your head chopped off or you'll get re-educated. So when the true mark of the beast is implemented, it will be a life or death. It's not going to be optional. So now we see that and they have the technology. It's already there. They're just waiting for the day. I believe the rapture, the Holy Spirit in us, in the church, is restraining all of what they have planned. They have the guillotines. They have the casket liners. They have the concentration camps. They have detainment centers. They have an army of, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of tanks, UN vehicles. They have a whole nother branch of UN blue helmets that these tanks can come and gather people up. They're like traveling armored cells and they're just waiting to be released. All of that is being held back by the Holy Spirit. The moment it happens, it's going to be anarchy. And, you know, they, they've, they've made movies about that, the, the Day of Anarchy, where you can legally kill and maim and destroy, and it's not against the law. And actually, they just passed some laws that murder and killing and stealing is not against the law. You can't be detained. So, yeah, you see that in, in the One World Religion Center being open and the Pope making his Antichrist statements and the queen and, and her lighting up the triple DNA helix, on and on. All that stuff is our security that what we're seeing also is solid biblically, okay? But again, we have to count on what do his days and times say. The last thing I'll say, I, I mentioned this before, the first and second temple were both taken away on the 9th of Av in the first year of Ashmita. So we just passed over from the seventh year of Ashmita. We are now in the first year of a new Shemitah cycle. Could it be we have to wait all the way till the 9th of Av? I pray to God, no, we don't have to wait that long. But uh, if we do, Mr. Bones, I'm not shaving till the rapture. Oh, won't that be pretty? <laughs> Razor, please. So that's all I have for you. I hope uh, that you're encouraged. I know this one, this one hit a little harder. I mean, it was just so, so very exciting. Do I regret looking? Not a single bit. Would I do it again? A million times because that was worth the ride. And I... I, I'm now in a kind of a perplexed position because of this double tabernacle thing. Um, I think I'll feel a little stronger right after it passes if it does. I'm still very hopeful for that. I always wondered, the, the moon disappearing is, is a sign of the rapture. How could we disappear on an appointed time that the moon would be disappearing? This is the only one. This is the only one. Well, uh, Feast of Trumpets could have been if it was, if it was tied to the 47th day. But um, that's something to think about. But then, man, Noah's flood. It, again, if the world knew that we're coming up on this and you're doing the exact same thing, the world would be terrified. The Lord said to Noah, there's gonna be a floody, floody. Lord said to Noah, there's gonna be a floody, floody. Get those children out of the muddy, muddy children of the Lord. <laughs> hey, that's a good ending. Thank you, my love. Over and out. Hope I don't see you again. Hey, Mr. Bones. 
I hope you see my hinder parts flying through the sky. <laughs> Mr. Bone, you can't say hinder parts. The Bible says it. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs>